I am PI brought to you by DigiKey. Every week, Lady Ada shows you the latest NPI new product introduction. That's what it stands for. This week is Nordic Lady Ada. What is the NPI of the week? This week. Okay, I'm glad I checked digikey.com slash new because the, this is like a hot, just dropped NPI. Um, the NRF 54 series is here. Um, we've just, we're just accelerating with Nordic. Like every year they're coming out with a new family of chips. They did the Wi-Fi chips, they did the power management chips. Um, and now they're releasing their NRF 54 series. Um, they, there's actually two, there's the NRF 54L and the 54H. We'll talk about the H later, but the L is kind of what's being announced right now. Um, their new Cortex M33 128 megahertz uh, processor with BLE support, lots of flash, lots of RAM. Actually, it's not flash, it's NVM re-RAM, which we'll talk about later. Um, peripherals, ADC, and more. Uh, this is kind of the latest in their series. Um, you know, they started with the NRF 8001. We had a breakout for this like 15 years ago, 10, whatever, 12 years ago. Then they moved up to the NRF. That, and that chip, you had to use SPI to communicate with it to do uh, Bluetooth low energy. And then they came out with the NRF 51 series, which was kind of like, I think that was their first chip that was a chip with BLE. Um, and the NF51 is actually still used, uh, was used in the Microbit V1. So very recently it was still being used and we still sell it. Um, you can either program it directly or use it as, you know, a coprocessor like here. Um, the NR52 series came after that. This was their first Cortex M3 or M4 series. This was the M4, uh, but didn't have native USB. We, we did have a breakout board for this, a feather board, but, uh, and you could program it with Arduino. But to be honest, we were really excited when the NR52A40 uh, came out because this was the first chip that had all the peripherals, Bluetooth low energy, Cortex M4, and it had native USB, um, which is pretty sweet because now it can act as your all-in-one processor. Like you only have one chip for your entire, you know, whatever watch or wearable or tag um, because you can bootload uh, DFU over USB. And um, you'll need a couple passives and like a crystal to get it going. It's ex extremely compact, all-in-one. Um, just put a 2.4 gigahertz antenna on it and you're basically got uh, pretty rock solid Bluetooth low energy or, or Zigbee um, support to the NR52840. And we've loved this chip for a long time. We actually kind of, um, I, I think we covered the NR53, which is, which came out like I think two years ago. And this is sort of the successor. This was the M33 chip. Um, I'll be honest though, I didn't really use this chip. I kind of subscribed to the like alternate every other version. So, you know, really liked the NR51, did a lot with it, didn't do a lot with the NR52832, but did a lot with the 840, not a lot with the 53, but that means that the NRF54 is going to be a big winner for us. Um, so as mentioned, um, this new series is like the NRF5340, it has an M33. Um, this one's 128 megahertz, I believe the, 53 was 96 megahertz. I think it's a little bit faster. Definitely has a lot more flash memory for storage. Um, it comes with up to 1.5 megabytes of like program storage on the 15 series. But if you don't want to spend as much, you can get the NR54 L05, which is like minimized, right? You have only 96K of RAM and uh, 512K of program storage, which makes sense because I like, guess we've um, looked at what people have used the NRF series for, like, you know, the first few chips, they only had maybe one or two variants, but especially folks who are using these in like tags, like find my tags or like um, keys, like if you want to replace a like, car keys or, or house keys with uh, Bluetooth low energy, you don't need like a ton of flash memory and like, you know, saving 50 cents on your bill of materials is going to be a big deal. So you can kind of slide back and forth. All of them have the same BLE 6 support. They all have channel sounding, which we'll talk about a little bit. All do mesh Zigbee thread. Um, only the five, the 54 L10 and L15 support matter Amazon Sidewalk. And that's, I think, just because of the RAM restriction, right? Because you have to run the, um, the soft device that they release that does like the Bluetooth radio management. Um, 
looks like to do matter, you just need more memory. I mean, matter has a lot, as, as I've learned, matter has a lot of crypto in it. And so you do need to have um, a fair bit of, of RAM and program memory to store all of the, the encryption stuff. Um, at the bottom, it says like Wi-Fi, but just that's with a coprocessor. It doesn't actually do Wi-Fi. It's on, you have to have a separate coprocessor chip. One thing that they've uh, not forgotten about is making their chips really good for low power usage. So you can have like two, three microamp idle if you are, you know, with RAM, you know, running. Um, so retained memory. Uh, it's interesting, you know, the lower, the less RAM, of course, the less um, current you're going to use. So on the L05, you'll use only two microamps compared to the L15, which will use three. Still, three microamps is like tiny. Your self-discharge on your battery is going to um, compete with that. And that's, you know, with it in sleep mode, but it's idle. It can wake up instantly and um, run code. And there's lots of timers built in. There's also a RISC-V coprocessor. Uh, which I kind of find interesting. I'm sort of hoping that the RISC-V coprocessor is used to run the soft device um, because that way your main processor doesn't have to like jump out and um, handle the real-time operating system for the Bluetooth stack. Um, ideally, the RISC-V coprocessor would do that. But um, since these chips are like they're really a day old, I haven't actually tried it yet. So I'll check that out. Um, other peripherals, lots of timers. So it's kind of, it, the peripherals are honestly not too different than the Android 52840. Uh, the ADC got bumped up to 14 bit. Um, I think there's now two channels of I2S, maybe before there's only one. I think there's three PWMs still, two quad true decoders, I think there's one before. And um, it looks like instead of having like two I2C, two serial, and to SPI, now there's five serial interfaces and you can configure them to be either SPI, I squared C or UART, which is kind of similar to like the CIRCOM series of peripherals that the SAMD had. So that's not too surprising. Um, one interesting thing is like, you know, as I mentioned, it doesn't have flash memory. And, you know, I was chatting with some folks about, you know, why does the RP20 series and like the, the latest chips um, from like Renaissance or whatever, they require this external flash chip, which adds to your build materials, adds to your size. And what I really like about the NRF 52 series is that they, and the 54, is that they have the flash still built into the chip. You don't have this external thing that you're dealing with um, that you have to wire up and, and account for the bill of material for. And um, part of that is the processes that these chips are using are not very conducive to adding um, you know, classic flash memory. Um, the flash memory often has to be like bonded separately because you need a physically larger process for making it. But resistive RAM, I guess, I, I've never seen a chip before that uses this. Um, resistive RAM, which is based on memristor technology, can use these uh, smaller processes. So maybe they're able to still get it on chip, which would be really cool because like I said, it means your chip is much smaller. You don't need an extra flash. Um, everything's all built in and it's um, nice and speedy because you don't have this external QSPY or OSPY interface you're dealing with. Speaking of sizing, um, compared to the NR52840, what I kind of like is that instead of having this kind of funky like QFN, but it has pads on the inside, you know, kind of semi-wackiness, you sort of need a four layer board. They went with two package sizes, one big, the six by six QFN, and it's like a true QFN. And then you're like, you want tiny, uh, two and a half by two millimeter um, CSP BGA. So very tight pitch on the balls, but you know, you care about size. You don't mind having a um, four layer board or even six layer board, which you'll need, and you'll need to plug the vias, but size is so important, you go with the small one. But the QFN 48, Look at that. It's a classic QFN. How nice is that? All the pins are on the outside. Um, really easy to do this with a two layer board. Very excited. And this is the uh, BGA layout. Okay, so um, one thing I saw in the spec of the data sheet, as I mentioned, it now has this thing called channel sounding, which is part of Bluetooth 6. So channel sounding is like if you if you think about like what so many of these NRF chips have been used for, Bluetooth chips, 
a really, I mean, yes, there's chips inside of your phone, inside of your watch, whatever, but a lot of people have these like find my device tags. Um, it's like air tags or tiles or whatever. And they all use BLE and they tend to use like the cheapest chip you can get and they want to use, uh, they use RSSI. So it's the, the strength of the signal to kind of sort of guess how far something is and how close it is. And, and they use this advertising mode where they advertise the unique ID and then the unique ID is tied to your identification. And that's how you know where your device is. Um, so um, channel sounding is a new technique, which I guess builds on the angle of attack, angle of departure stuff, where you um, use a wide band pulse. And so it does a better job at identifying um, how far it is, not just using RSSI, but actually like the, time of flight um and i think it also can help you like know which direction it's coming from too so that's kind of cool but um we'll check that out it looks like it's coming with a software update to the nordic chipset so yeah it's like if you want to use it for like locks or keys or tags for um knowing how far something is will be a better uh near field identification method okay Next up, um, okay, so right now only the NR5415 is available. Um, that's the chunkiest of chips, and they're, they're coming really soon. Um, so sign up at DigiKey. Uh, what's in stock right now is the dev kit, and the dev kit's only 40 bucks. Um, I already picked one up. You should pick one up. There's not that many in stock, um, but it has everything. I think it even has the power monitoring built into it, and of course the programming interface. Uh, so I strongly, strongly recommend you pick up um, one of these dev boards if you want to get started with this chipset immediately. And as a preview, so this is like the end of the movie where they're like, it's like the end credits or whatever. Not the it's end. Like the Marvel movie. It's like, oh, Spider-Man's going to come back. Spider-Man's coming back. Yeah. Okay, but now it's like Super Spider-Man, oh, Super right? Spider-Man. Uh, the NR54H series, which like, like so the NF, NR54L is like, oh, that's kind of cool, like low cost. But the H series is something like I'm very interested in. Dual Cortex M33 running at 320 megahertz, four megabytes of that program storage, one megabyte of RAM. So that's you know kind of nice, a good, a really good amount. Um, and high speed USB and mm. I3C. Mm. Uh, very cool. I'm really looking mm, forward to this chip. chip. This will this would be like a beast for circuit pipe. What's interesting is that it's. Everyone's kind of going after this like crossover processor. Like, this is getting to the point where it's like, wow, you this is faster than like most single board Linux computers yeah. from like last ten years. And it's a microcontroller. It's a microcontroller. So... Anyways, right? The NRF fifty four L dev kit is in stock, so pick one up right now because there's only like a hundred. It's probably even less now. There's gonna be less because people watch INMPI and they're like, this is what I'm just gonna get. So... I, yeah, I already picked one up, and I'm, I'm gonna tell my devs to pick one up too. Yeah. So go forth purchase, um, and then we have one minute movie. Security. Today, I'm very excited to introduce the NRF 54L15, the first SOC in the NRF 54L series from Nordic Semiconductor. The NRF 54L series complements the revolutionary NRF 54H series and covers a different set of end product requirements. NRF 54L series is for the next generation of IoT products, while the superior processing power and ample memory of NR54H series enables innovative IoT products previously not possible. Together, they cover an unseen range of wireless applications, from simple sensors to advanced IoT devices. Let's take a sneak peek at NRF54L15. NRF54L15 integrates an ARM Cortex M33 processor running at 128 MHz, doubling the processing power of NR52840 while reducing the power consumption. It has 1.5 megabyte of non-volatile memory and 256 kilobyte of RAM, more than enough for running multiple...